Hey y'all, I finally added some audio support to Taka, which is my runtime platform for applications and games that runs either in the web or off of it using WebAssembly. So here's my music box demo. Loads up in the browser. I can play some music here. I can even edit it while it's going. Okay, sort of fun. And also to point out that it runs outside the browser, Let's get rid of portion of this URL and download that Taka app, which again contains primarily WebAssembly and data. And I can load it up in the native player and play the same thing here. You can also go full screen or whatever you want to do with it. And it works just the same offline as online. Only this is not running in a web browser. This isn't like Electron or something. The software stack is almost completely different as an almost independent implementation of the Taka platform. And if we look inside of the console here and we reload the page, we can see that the entire page loads in less than 300K, which includes the runtime support for Taka in the web browser implementation, as well as the app itself, which is about 33K, including the embedded sound sample that I recorded from an actual music box. For this demo, I'm using the AUG Vorbis format because it was easy to use and well supported in every browser except Safari, so presumably this won't play properly in Safari until I polyfill support for it in the browser there. Go blame Apple. And we notice here that I have a number of other demos I've made in the past as well, including both 2D and 3D graphics in a variety of programming languages. This particular music box demo I did in C++, although I accidentally based the transpose to a key of C sharp rather than a key of C, so it's sort of unfortunate I didn't use the C sharp programming language for this. Anyway, enough of Paco Bell's Canon in D and C sharp. Let's look at C++. As a quick high level overview, I used a variety of features from C++ 20 through C++ 11 and earlier. Although some things I didn't use were std print from C++ 23. I tried it out, but it was a much slower build and had a very large output file. I didn't use modules, even though I did a demo on C++ 20 modules long ago on my YouTube channel, because in my game jam level quality of ramming through these demos, modules are just being too much effort for me to get working. Maybe I just didn't go the right path, but I didn't feel like dealing with it. And something that may have been appropriate in some cases was stood ranges, but I didn't really think about it, so I didn't run across trying to use them. I also didn't use stood algorithm because that also made the compile time slower. But as of this particular demo, I've now finally actually written a C header file for using Taka. I previously manually written the bindings in for each other language that I've written demos in before. So there's various type definitions and definitions of the functions that are available in the Taka API, which is relatively small when it comes down to it. I'm trying really hard to make this a small surface, but still capable. I even looked briefly at defining my API and WebAssembly interface types, or WIT, but there was some awkwardness with that, and so I might get to it again in the future, and it would be perhaps in addition to a simpler API defined outside of WIT. We'll see. But then in addition to the .h that I wrote up for C access, and I haven't really verified use from C, so maybe I made mistakes, I also wrote a separate C++ header file, where I primarily do type conversions from C++ friendly things, over to the more C-friendly things. So for example, I use std span from C++20, as well as scoped enums, because that's a little bit friendlier when using from C++. Then for the anatomy of the Taka application itself, I do have a main down here because I had trouble getting it to work well properly otherwise, but I don't use the main for anything. And I might still be abusing undefined behavior, but I found that if I tried initializing, for example, C++ std vectors inside of main, they'd get wiped out when main was over. So everything I actually do is after main. Main technically gets run by Taka, and then it goes through and runs the things I didn't care about, which are after main and hopefully don't get cleaned up. But this is what I've got going right now. Again, game jam level quality of code here. But Taka calls the exported start, where I initialize a lot of things. And then it calls the exported update, which receives events including now with explicit mouse press events, which I didn't have before. Note that here in the setup, I'm defining vertices for use inside of GPU shaders, buffers for filling in some of that data, and among all the rest of that, including my shaders themselves, I also decode this sound, which like I said, is embedded as an Vorbis data file. 
but this is an asynchronous decode because that's how it works in browsers and Taka, even when running offline in the separate implementation is designed to be browser friendly. So I have to watch for this tasks done event to know that all the decoding is finished before I run anything else in my program. Here's my little ding dong. Again, recorded from an actual physical music box that I have in my house. And for a little bit of a peek into the implementation of the Taka platform, the native implementation is written in Rust. Here's the decoding happening, where I push the job onto my work queue, where I'm then using the Kira crate behind the scenes to actually handle the playback, and it further abstracts the decoding of sound samples. Kira is nice because it includes some things like adjusting the playback rate slash frequency and or various other kinds of things. It's not as capable as web audio that web browsers do, but it still does quite a bit of stuff. And it'll probably do good enough for what I'll need for Taka purposes for any foreseeable future. Like I said, here in the browser implementation, I'm using web audio with audio context to decode the audio data. And that happens automatically in an asynchronous fashion here. And note that audio context is sort of a tricky beast. Because in web browsers, you can't just play audio in a web browser tab until after you have some kind of event in the page, like typing if you have the focus and or if you click a button or touch with your finger. And so what I do in the browser implementation of Taka is I just watch for these and automatically resume the audio context. So you don't have to think about it, but you do have to think about it in your app. I wanna make sure that some kind of input has happened before I start playing audio. Then, like I said, I embed the data, whether that's fragment and vertex shader or the sound sample directly into the C program. And unlike other languages I've done in previous demos, which have nice, easy data embedding, that does not exist in C++ yet. Although I think it was in the C23 standard. And in my build script, which is again, just super hack, I use XXD to dump binary Spear V shaders or Og Vorbus sound files into C source code. That's XXD that comes with the Vim editor. And I had not heard about this before, but apparently this dash I option creates C source code for you. So that's how I get the data into the program. Someday I might have, you know, external streaming support, but my focus on Taka is primarily self-contained, small and secure. And so you won't have network or external data access by default. And so here's just a sampling of some of my control here. When you've pressed a button, you know, if you've clicked the play button on the screen or the rewind button, and or if you clicked inside the grid, I do not have a user interface framework here. I have some ideas for how to do cross language modules in a way that's gonna be friendly for how Talk is using WebAssembly, but that's not supported yet. But maybe someday someone can make an entire UI framework that's available from any language inside of Taka. But for now, it's very low level code here that sort of hacks a user interface framework. And here's an example of me using stood optional to keep track of optional values of where you may have clicked inside of the note dingy dong grid. We don't need to dig into the details of this, just given a quick overview of what's going on here. And something else interesting, ignore the stuff up here, that's still just calculations of grids and buttons and stuff. But I did implement song printing capabilities. So for example, again here in the web demo, we see already high from C++, or if I press down, that's where it dumps out the note data from whatever you've edited here. Oh, by the way, worth noting, you also can't erase these notes if you want to. But in any case though, there's the example of where this printing happens. And instead of using printf, which technically I could do, I'm actually going through Taka print after formatting into a buffer space here. Taka print is more controlled in the sense that it says, I want this thing to get printed out now as its own entity versus the standard out, which I support somewhat in Taka through old timey WASI standards. That's a little less structured in how the printing happens. Anyway, here you can see that I used old C style formatting. I may have used some slightly more modern C++ formatting. I can't remember exactly what experience I had from that. I do remember what happened when I tried using std format. And as I mentioned earlier, it made a very ballooned size as well as compiling much slower. So I didn't have much interest in doing that route. Otherwise it might've been awesome. And then I'm also constantly redrawing the display where almost everything on the screen is actually just a rectangle with some brightness level. The only things that aren't rectangles are the triangles in the buttons up top. Everything else here, including the background, is using the exact same geometry. And all of it's using the exact same shader. 
and where I used C++ 20 concepts was in doing a very simple vector operations library here. And I also use the concepts here for my map function, which again I used instead of std algorithm because I didn't want one more slow header file to include. Maybe C++ modules would have come to the rescue for me on that if I had pushed a little harder to get that working properly. But it's nice to be able to have the option in C++ these days to define what you expect to have in your type parameters. And maybe before we go, I should look quickly at the shaders here. This is my first demo where I've used GLSL rather than HLSL or WGSL. And in this case, the vertex positions are based on the rectangle or the triangle geometry and everything else is instanced, meaning I provide only one offset, one scale, and one brightness level for each of those rectangles or triangles. Super simple shader here that just passes along a brightness level and the transform position to the fragment shader, which I tried basing on something I saw in Shader Toy, which is one of the reasons why I used GLSL here. But the thing from Shader Toy looked possibly too expensive, so I changed almost everything about it. And I wasn't convinced it looked like I wanted it anyway, although I think my outcome of the appearance also wasn't terribly good either. I am just guess I'm not really that great at visuals. Someone who's awesomer than me maybe can improve these shaders sometime. But it mostly just combines a bunch of noise and then dumps out the fragment color. So all the visuals are based on that same shader. But before we go, let's just prove that we can modify and rebuild this Taka program. And instead of the Canon and D in C sharp, Let's try some other thing. I'll just call it a basic song. This is one I basically drew by just wiggling my mouse around the screen and then tweaking it until it didn't sound terrible. Let's build it, which usually takes less than three seconds, but I don't have things handy at the moment, so it took four. Let's do it again just for kicks here. Oh, I guess it's being slow right now. And if we go and run it, we see here we just talk a run our thing, which is basically what I had configured my desktop to do when I downloaded it at the beginning of this video. I run it here, and there's my program, only with a different default song loaded up. Now what I'd really like to have in this demo is switching between a variety of songs, and whenever you modify it, using your amazing musical skills or mine, that gets saved and will load up next time you visit the app, subject to the limits of what web browsers can do. But I didn't get data storage done for this demo like I wanted to. That'll have to be next time, which also is going to be interestingly related to the topic of authenticating slash signing your app to know that you have access to the same data storage across invocations, even though your app may have changed. So that'll be a fun task to dig into. Meanwhile, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. And I also have links to Taka and the Taka demos in the description of the video. Bye, y'all.